baby. Hello, nasty. Hello, baby. Hello. Hello. I say hello. Hello, friend. Well, hello, little girl. Hello, my treacherous friends. Hello, operator. The beginning of everything. Welcome back, my friends. It's showtime. Hello and welcome to the penultimate episode of The Brink of Sanity. I am Jay and with me is Mark. How you doing, Mark? Good, good. Why is this the penultimate episode, Jay? Uh, we all know we're quitting at 300. That we're what? Quitting Record at 300. Oh, quitting. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. So we only got one episode to go. What, what if penultimate, like, I only know that, like, is there another place where that term comes in, that comes in besides, like, TV shows? I mean, it's supposed to be second to last, but I don't know... I didn't even. I don't think I even knew that until like uh, watching Game of Thrones or something. Like it wasn't like I, I never. I never watched like, ooh, this is the penultimate episode of Growing Pains. I wonder what's gonna happen in the finale. But it's, it's like a drama TV show thing. Like, is this what a new thing basically that they start calling it the penultimate episode? I don't think it's new. I well, I don't remember. You, I don't remember TV shows always being like the second to last episode was the where everything happened, and the last episode you wrap things up. But now it's like every TV show. The panel with the ultimate episode is the one that you really have to look forward to. Right, right. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. Well, is a lot going to happen today? Because it started off terribly so far. <laughs> uh, no, that's this. We I think we peaked already. Ah, uh, we're done. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, guys. So um, uh, we'll be back next week for our finale. So Jay, Jay, um, I so I don't know if you don't have to tell us if you're going to have kids one day, but if you do, mm -hmm. I kind of know what kind of dad you're going to be. The penultimate? Maybe, maybe. Um, I'm gonna guess, um, and take this and take this however you want. Okay. You will be uh, the dad where the the uh, the guy in France with the Spider Man guy mm -hmm. had to res rescue it, rescue the the boy because you were because he was playing Pokemon Go. Do you know the story? <laughs> I, I heard about it today for the first time. Have you seen the video? Yeah, I, I did. Yeah. So basically, for those that don't know. There was a boy, he couldn't have been maybe like two, three years old maybe, mm -hmm. hanging off a balcony maybe three stories up. And this guy who uh, – I guess he was a refugee in France – jumped up three stories and rescued the boy. And the story is the reason the boy ended up out there was because the father was uh, – he went out to play – maybe to run some errands and was playing Pokemon Go instead of watching his son. That's smart. And, yeah. So Jay, will you sacrifice your son's life for Pokemon Go? No, no, it's it's not that good. It's not that. What if it was better? If they could improve Pokemon Go, would would it then be worth sacrificing a child's life? I mean, it depends how much better, I guess. Okay. The uh, have you the video is also really weird. Have you yeah. watched the video? Yeah, the, because what, there's already somebody up there. The dad is right there. Why does he just grab the kid? Yeah, that's a. He's like letting the kid hang for like minutes. I don't. I don't know. I, I don't. I don't understand the like. And every article I read about it, no one mentions the dad could have just reached out and grabbed the kid, but didn't. I mean, how heavy could that kid have been? He's he's a three year old kid. If you're a dad, you've been lifting your three year old kid for a while now. You've at least been working those muscles to lift the kid up. I mean, he's like, can... ooh. Ooh, let me see if this man jumping up the balcony could do a better job of it. <laughs> I mean, you could pick up a kid by one arm, right? Yeah, yeah. A three-year-old – yes, a three-year-old boy you could pick up with one arm. You should definitely be able to pick him up with one arm. The video is just fat. Like, it's weird because you're just like – first of all, how did the boy even get it, like, hanging out there? I don't really – they haven't explained any of these, these – I want an investigation. Yeah, that's guy. true. Why? Like, he didn't fall. He was, like, hanging, so – did like, he, what like, happened right before that? Like, he didn't fall. How did he hang right that? How does a three-year-old boy even have the strength in his hands to hold on for that long? <laughs> I, I, the, yeah, the, the, I guess if people haven't seen the video, this whole bit really makes no sense. But pound for pound, that three-year-old boy is, like, stronger than both of us, right, Jay? Yeah, absolutely. I would have fallen after about 30 seconds. He's just holding on, like, he's like... Hmm, I'm just going to hold on here while this man walking by, walking by jumps up here like Spider-Man. We also don't know how long he was on there before the, the video started, too. And the dad's just like, Let, you, you got to work on your grip, son. You gotta, I'm going to let you hang there a little longer. Come on, come on, come on. I'll tell you what, son. You could live if this uh, refugee walking by rescues you. <laughs> that was very strange. 
everything about it is so strange. They've not explained the Pokemon Go part of it, while weird, is not the strangest part of the story. That's probably the most normal part. And also, the, so the refugee, because he did this, he, he got permanent status in France. They say the, uh, the, the prime minister or whatever they have that leads their country. Uh, do you know is a prime minister? Yeah, sure. Okay. The, uh, the king of France uh, basically sat down with him and said, uh, you can be your permanent – I've granted you a permanent citizenship. So – which says how they feel about refugees there is you can only stay if you basically – can perform a heroic superhero-like act. I like that rule. Yeah. Basically, we're keeping the refugees that most resemble the X-Men. <laughs> Better look out for France in like 20 years. Yeah. Maybe house. they're... I don't, I don't know if it's an Olympic thing or they're like, they're like we need to like extra... Like, we need, we're, we're, Donald Trump's going to attack here at some point, so we need to like get the X-Men ready. It's, it's a long play for the 2024 <laughs> Olympics. <laughs> they're like, okay, Spider-Man. Um... Shoot, there's no event where you have to rescue a child. Damn it! <laughs> it's a really weird... Uh, b- th- by the way, the refugee, like, he's in pretty good shape. He's jumping up there. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't have made it halfway up there. Yeah, that's not really a... Is he really a refugee, or is he, like, an Olympic athlete? Well, I think we established that he's now both. Yeah, that was a pretty... Uh, I just found that video. I saw that... Uh, I found I found it interesting. <laughs> the video, I just, like, I'm like... Because you see the story, the headline is uh, Spider Francis Spider Man. And you're like, mm-hmm. oh, cool. Like, and then you see, like, they little have like he rescues a boy. You're like, and you're like, why isn't the other guy grabbing him? He's, he's right there. Like, if you watch the video, the guy, the boy is hanging, and a foot over from him is a guy, I presumably the dad, just standing there staring as this other guy jumps up to like save his boy. And he doesn't like, even stand directly in front of the kid. He's only like in front of, he's like to the side of him. He's the side of him, and it's not like the, uh, it's not like the uh, the, the superhero of a uh, superhero of a superhero of Spider-Man guy like just j- j- like it took him a little while to get up there. Yeah. But that had, I I was trying to figure out in the video if like there was a separate a thing that's separating them, but even if there's a thing that's separating them, he could have just reached over. There no, was... there's not because I think at the end they each grab one arm. <laughs> oh, you could just lift him up. I just needed I needed a second person to lift the carry with me. It's like carrying a piano. I need a second person. Hey, you dirt there down there. Can you leap up three stories and help me carry my boy up here before he dies? <laughs> um so uh that, that, I don't have any more to talk about the story. Well, yeah, I, that, yeah, let's move on. Um by by the way, so the doc was supposed to be on the show today, yeah. and I'm kind of disappointed he's on the show. Um I had a real problem for him and now uh Jay, are you a doctor? I'm not, but I'm friends with the doctor. Do you think you could you could handle my uh, medical issue? Sure, let's diagnose. Um, God damn it, another freaking spider. I mean, not spider, another freaking ant. The ants are like back slightly. <laughs> like I see a couple of them, and the exterminator's here. I'm like, well, I saw a couple of them upstairs. And he's like, well, if I put bait down, they're all going to come in from outside. You'll get a lot of them. So I can't put I can't put the bait down to kill them unless there's like. Like, like 10 of them. If there's one or two of them, then he's like, well, you're going to attract more. But uh, I don't know where they, I, I guess, I guess like apparently maybe armies of ants just live around my house and like, I, I, can't, I can't invite them in. You're just also. getting the scouting parties. You're not getting the whole. Yeah. Until the whole party comes in when they've like ready to wage war, then the exterminator will do shit about it. I had a ton of them like two days ago and then they all disappeared. They were just really? like, pop, yeah, they were just popping in to say hi. The big or little ones? The little ones. The little ones, I mean, like, you, you just kill them with your finger, but, like, they're still kind of annoying. Yeah. You know what actually I had today? I found my back. You went on a home. You know what I found today I had to clean up today? Bones. No. I had that once before, um, which I don't know where it comes from. I mean, I, I assume an animal left it there. A dead bird. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's fun. Yeah. Would you be ready to clear up a dead bird? I wouldn't be happy about that, no. I, uh, I saw the dead bird in my backyard. And I'm like, well, I, I kind of, I can't call anyone because I'm supposed to be a grown adult, um, and I can't let my kids like come play with a dead bird. And I'm like, how did the bird die? And you know how the bird, like, I'm looking at the bird. And I could, I had, I figured out how he's, how he's dead. Do you want know how he died? Depression. He had anxiety, Jay. He, he, took, he took the CPA and then like just killed himself. <laughs> um, he was missing a head. I don't think that's a natural condition. <laughs> just, I was looking at the bird. I'm like, I wonder what's wrong with the bird. I'm like, is, like, is he alive? Like, is he just laying there? Is he sick? 
And then I'm like, I'm poking with a stick because that's the first thing I do to make sure he's like not alive. Um, then I'm like, oh, he has no head. So I'm um, pretty sure he's dead at this point. <laughs> and then I grab a garbage bag and a stick and the stick. And I'm trying to get it into this, the garbage bag because I don't want to touch it. Would you touch it? With your, you're not going to touch it with your hands, right? No, dad, absolutely not. I mean, there's two approaches. You could do like the dog poop approach where you like put your use the use the garbage bag where you reach. Like you've picked up dog poop before with a dog. I've seen people do it. You know, you use the bag. You use the outside of the bag, so you're not really touching it. It's the inside of the bag touching it. Right. Would you touch a dead bird like that? I wouldn't want to. I really didn't want it. So I was like trying to get the, like the stick to get the like the stick with like the bird would like kind of like come up like halfway in the bag and then fall out. And then halfway I think I would, the... No, I think I would do the plastic bag grabbing thing, but I would ha- also have a glove on. I didn't use a glove because I don't think I own like a big glove in our house. I need I don't know where the glove. I don't think we have gloves in our house. Like we have like snow snow gloves, but not like no. If, it, dead if I bird get a house, gloves. I'm getting like outdoor like work gloves. I should get those. There are more than one occasion where I've like I needed those. Yeah. Um, that should be my next purchase. I'll go to the get. But uh, you're gonna buy the poisonous ones from China. Probably, probably the ones that are that they're definitely the ones that are banned in California. They're, they're like a uh, dollar cheaper. <laughs> I need to save money. <laughs> uh, but they, I'm trying to get like I put the plastic bag down. And you're trying to like kind of prod the bird. It took me like 15 minutes to get the bird into the plastic bag because I didn't really want to touch it. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I'm like, oh, just miss, just miss. Eventually, I'm like, I'm like, I'm, it's like I'm playing golf with the with the dead bird. When I was in high school, we had uh, my parents' house had like a kind of small, like above the ground pool, mm-hmm. and we decided, me and my friends decided to go night swimming, and every once in a while, something would like brush up against us, and we didn't know what it was. Um, next morning, oh, we look, we look. Wait, hang on, hang on, hang on. Was it was it a dead family member? Um, it was dead. I, I'm gonna guess it's like uh, actually let me guess it's a uh, dead squirrel. Yes. Uh, not happy about that at all. Was it the worst part where you're like, oh, this feels nice against my back. I'm just gonna brush up against it and not find out what it is till the morning. I was just thinking like, how much water did I swallow that night? Oh God. Yeah. Did you you realize that the, it, 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 the squirrel is dead? How soon do you take a shower? Oh, I mean you might. Yeah, I mean, like, you might have taken a shower after swimming, but you take another one, right? Yeah, no, I took one after swimming, and then I, yeah, I definitely took another, like, three. Oh, my God, that's a... Would you sleep in a bed? So here's a... Would you rather? Well, it's not would you rather. My my game's of a... Okay, so $10,000 raise at work, but you have to sleep for a month with a dead squirrel in your bed. No. Nope. $20,000 $20,000 raise at work. No, can squirrel. you imagine after like a week? <laughs> a week. Let's say no, there's no stink. maggots. No maggots, okay? The stink alone. Okay. Double your work salary. Triple your salary at work. Dead squirrel in your bed. And, and it could be, uh, it, uh, I'll make it better. It's a twin bed. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot worse. <laughs> yeah. Okay, okay. King bed, dead squirrel. One month. I don't know if I don't think I'd be able to handle the smell. Okay, um, I'm guessing five hundred thousand dollars a year is is more than triple your salary at work. Five hundred thousand dollars a year, um, and you have to sleep with a dead deer in your bed. Well, you just made it worse again. I know. No. Did you okay. only take up the entire bed? I would have to like snuggle with the It's a dead king. Deer. You could have a California king. Do you know how big deer are? <laughs> okay, okay. How about the squirrel? The squirrel, five hundred thousand dollars a year, uh, regular, whatever your king bed, and no maggots. No maggots, squirrel. But the squirrel has to be there for for uh, the entire time you're making this money. What about ants? Oh, the entire time I'm making the money. No. Why? I, I thought you said a month. I know. I'm making a million dollars. A million dollars a year. Okay, let's move on. S- no, no. Let's move on. No, I mean, you would not sleep with a dead squirrel for a million dollars a year? No. What? What? How about this? $10 million a year, and you're the best film editor in the world, and you've gotten perfect scores in the CPAs, and all you have to do is have sex with a dead squirrel. No. <laughs> okay, so here's why I was uh, the uh, the doc. Um, 
my nipples really hurt me. I was hoping the doc could help me. Have you been running a lot? I have been. Have you ever had the nipple? Have you ever had your nipples hurt you from running? Yeah. Yeah. Have you what? What's have you had something really bad? I I really my nipples were bleeding. Uh, I don't know if I had blood, but I had them hurt really bad. Um, you uh, you probably need to wear a different shirt. I mean, that's probably so. Basically, I went for long as I've ever run on a. On Friday, I went for a really, really long run. I ran for – I ran 10 miles on Friday. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah. I, I So it was like a – I felt good. I had – the kids were away and the kids were at, um, were at, with the – like with the uh, – I was off. I was I didn't work. I worked a half a day and the kids were with my uh, my in-laws. So I went for a really – I was feeling pretty good. I was like, I'm going for a really long run. Um, and I, But then like I got home and I'm all tired. I take up my shirt and I look down at my nipples and my nipples are like both bleeding. Jesus. It was – I didn't notice it that much while I was running. So I've had it before where my nipples hurt me. Hurt me Like it's not very often, very rarely. But like you feel it and like you stop running. I kind of just noticed my nipples feeling uncomfortable while I was running. Um, but this was like – goddamn. I've been putting freaking bacitration or whatever the stuff you put on your – you put on cuts. Is it bacitration? Uh, yeah. I've been putting that on my nipples and putting band-aids on them like I'm in a fucking like S&M video. Sounds, I think you should have done that before you went on the run. Well, I I had a uh, roommate in school who went, like did like a half marathon. And was talk, I, the first I had heard about the nipple thing where he was like – one of the things he wanted to do for the, the half marathon was put band-aids on his nipples. Um, I hadn't heard of that before then, but I wasn't that big into running then. Um, but I guess do, do does everyone that does marathons or like does, is the does everyone put like band-aids on their nipples and how do people I, run before band-aids? I think it might be the the whatever shirt you're wearing. Like if it's too baggy, it's gonna rub up and down while you're running. Yeah, I mean, but I I, don't I wear think that's why shirts. runners wear tight shirts to avoid the nipple stuff. Yeah. Oh, they don't really say that. Like protect your nipples, wear a tight shirt. Yeah, no, they don't. They definitely don't say that. If you wear a a brink of sandy T-shirt, will your nipples hurt you while you while you run? No, everyone should get one. Okay. Well, I was thinking that maybe we should redesign the shirts to have a warning on them. War, um, brink of sanity warning: this might hurt your nipples if you run long enough. We should make brink shirts that make your nipples extra sore if you run on them. Just put sandpaper Wait. on the inside. Yeah, right where your nipples are, basically. Like, we're going to make your nipples bleed. Break of sanity. Just, just two circles of sandpaper right where your nips are. <laughs> we here at Break of Sanity do not care about your goddamn nipples. We don't care about health. We don't care about exercising. In fact, uh, we're punishing you if you try to. I don't... I, I, yeah, so it hasn't felt good since then. Yeah, and no, now, that like, terrible. No, I mean, like, one of them looks a little better. One of them looks kind of weird now. Um, I was hoping the doc could, uh, I don't know how over Skype doing the show, he would, he would diagnose and fix this for me, but, uh, where are you doc? My nipple hurts and you're not helping me doc. <laughs> that's what, that's what, that's what I've been up to Jay. Jay, how, how are your nipples feeling? My nipples are all right. Are you basking in how, how nicely they feel right now? Yeah. I'm kind of, I'm kind of happy about my normal nips. Okay. You should be like, I, you should take pride in how nice they feel like. Do you ever like? Uh, do you ever like go like? I'm just gonna like rest my nipples this weekend. No one says that, huh? No, no, I haven't. No, do you, maybe I should like look like. I'd be like, honey, I'm not watching like S and M videos. I'm just trying to find out what they do to, to fix their nipples because they, they they use them in there there. Because I feel like runners and like S and M people have the same issues with their nipples. Do they? Well, I assume like S and M part of it is like they beat the shit out of each other's nipples and other things. Um, you don't think that's like a thing that like carries over something they have in common? I think it's a different kind of um, different kind of pain. <laughs> like on one of you them, you the... got your uh, your chafing. The other one, you got your pinching and squeezing. Different kind of injuries. So if you go to the doctor, the doctor would the doctor be able to tell, or he's he's like, oh, your nipple that your nipple does not look right. Are you into running or bondage? I think he would know. I think if you told him you were a runner and you got it through bondage. He would give you that knowing little half smirk before he uh, went on with his diagnosis. Maybe I should wear a running outfit there just to make sure he understands. This. No, 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 no. I'm not into bondage, sir. Sure you're not. Bring in the bloody T-shirt as evidence. <laughs> everyone, everyone in the waiting room is in a, in a track shoot pretending. <laughs> uh, what, what's new with you, Jay? 
Uh, really not much. I've, um, you know, working, having anxiety attacks, studying. <laughs> Actually, you know what I, so I discovered in our town? So uh, I went for a run, and like I went a different part of this long run. I went on a different uh, path than I normally run around. And so there's, there's, um, there's a part in our town where it says uh, – Something like blind uh, training area or blind person area, yeah. where there's the, and there's like the hell there's a Helen Keller thing in our town also. So I assume the blind people I've never seen them, but they all hang out in this blind practice area. Um, anyway, so I was running and I, it's another goddamn ant. It's got the guy was here. And he's like, no, 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 I can't do anything with the ants unless you have a lot of ants. You don't want me to attract the ants in from the outside. How about you just attract all the ants in and freaking kill them? How about that's your sneak attack on the ants? You don't wait till they attack. We attack first. <laughs> um, I, oh, so yeah. So I was running. I go, I go a different path, different direction. Um, and I see like dead end. Like where I'm running, like there's like a dead one of the streets is dead end, then dead end. And the next street sign says... Uh, uh, what was it? Uh, it was a uh, autistic child area. Okay. Have you ever seen this warning sign before? No, no. Um, apparently, and I was, I didn't know. Maybe like we have a blind area of town. We have an autistic area of town. Maybe like we like we subdivide all the problems and like they have their own little neighborhoods. <laughs> like maybe there's another part of town that's like this is Down syndrome village and this is uh. Sorry, Corky, you're in the uh, autism area. You're supposed to be in the retarded area. God, don't you know anything, Corky? Does, is uh, anybody going to get that Corky reference? Or? I don't, probably not. Well, I don't know. We have five fans. Are any of them old, as old as us? <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, this is a thing. Because I looked it up. I was like, this has to be a thing. Like, this can't just be like... It's, first of all, it's not like high comedy from the from that part of town. Uh it, the uh, apparently like it's a thing now if you have if you if you have an if there's a kid that has like bad autism where there's a, where there's a good chance he might end up like wandering in the street um, they put a sign up to warn people driving by huh um they, Never heard of that. I didn't know that like there were a lot of autistic I mean it's autism is tough and all that and I, I didn't know there was a lot of them like running into the street but I guess like it's a way. It's like a. You see, like the signs are like kids at play. So you're supposed to sl- like slow down, right? You've seen that sign, like kids at play. Yeah, yeah. So this is autistic kids uh, hanging out, kind of sign. So it, it's similar. It's like, um, hey, let, instead of figuring out why there's an epidemic right now, let's just put up a sign, call it a day. Maybe it's like find the. Maybe it's like a Where's Waldo thing. You're like, okay, now I've got to find the autistic kid. Is he hiding behind that tree? No. Is he hiding behind that bush? No. Yeah, I don't know. Do you, I mean? Do you think there's something that we're we're done? Like, do you think there's always been not always, but like aut- autism's been around for hundreds of years? We just haven't known about it, or is it like something that we're doing? Like, I think it's been around, but we're making it way, way, way worse. How? Like, you don't believe in the whole uh, like the uh, Jenny McCarthy like get vaccinated suddenly you're autistic? No, I don't think it's vaccines, but I do think it's the stuff we're putting in the food. Like what's the, I, you obviously don't have an idea of what it is. You're not, you're, uh, you're just, I mean, we're putting a ton of shit in our food. I mean, think about it. I bought a loaf of bread like three months ago. It's still in the fridge. There's not a spot of mold on it. It's like <laughs> I can make a sandwich right now and be fine. That is not normal. You know, they're doing their, they're now they're, you know how like you get fruit and the fruit goes bad. Yeah. Um, like the bananas turn brown. They're trying to now do it with, Food scientists are trying to do it so like the the, the banana turn turns brown or the fruit does st- last even longer like your bread basically. Yeah, that sounds totally natural. Yeah, you're like, what the hell are they injecting in there? I mean, I don't know enough about science. I mean, it all sounds like goddamn magic to me. But uh, I mean, you are right. The fact that like food, it's the fact that you buy something like simple. You buy like a, uh, I don't know. You buy what's something you bought, Jay? What do you buy? You buy yogurt, right? And yeah. there's 300 ingredients. You buy like bread. There's like you're like shouldn't the bread be like three ingredients? And there's like thirty seven things that you've never heard of, basically. As well, part I mean, of the ingredients. Ha- have you ever bought organic food? It yeah. goes bad. It goes bad by the time you get home. Yeah. Like that's what normal I, food does. Like that's that's why they they put all this shit in it so it lasts for like a month. You could just forget about it in the back of your fridge and eat it next year. 
Uh, but then you're just you're basically eating chemicals in the shape of whatever food it was supposed to be. So you're basically saying like the the, the what I'm stuck with is either m- trying to go to the supermarket every day. That's what spending, people used to do. Or having autistic kids. Right. Which we just put a sign up and I can just have my food last longer. Huh? Well, you just oh, we yeah. put a sign up for the autistic kids and I my food lasts longer. I mean, right. that's it's a, a good trade off. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's a win win. I don't know. There's all this. I mean, everything like they they put chemicals on your like your your couch basically to make sure it doesn't light on fire. But then like the the chemicals they put on there could probably give you cancer. Right. Like they say, like when you get a rug, you're supposed to like let it air out um, because there's all these chemicals on the rug that just like you just think it's a rug, but there's all these chemicals on it to like that could probably kill you also. Basically, everything can kill you and probably will. Yeah. Well, everyone dies, so uh, who knows if it's natural causes or we're just fucked. We're just screwing things up. Do you want to do HQ? Should we do it on the show, or are you going to pause the show? No, I was going to pause it. Okay, sure, why not? Okay. Is it going right now? Okay, we're back. Are we back? Uh, yeah, we're back. We're back. Okay. Do you want to explain why we why we uh, we went away? I don't know if it was actually <laughs> go away on the show. There, but there's, like, a, there's a live trivia game called HQ Trivia, and you could win real money, so... Um, we tried to do that. There's 12 questions, got up to question 10, won no money. Yeah, if you won, you get to split $100,000 tonight. Uh, of course, we got to split zero, so uh, <laughs> which is pretty much how it always goes. I, someone told me they, uh, the prize a lot of times are a lot smaller. Like during the day, they sometimes are like $2,500. It's called HQ Trivia if you want to download the app. Uh, we get no money from them, literally, uh, for, spots, for for promoting them or winning. But uh, they told me they, they won one of them during the day. And the prize was thirteen cents because <laughs> yeah, it's divided by how many people are left. So yeah, some days a lot of people are left, some days there's not. Yeah, um, but uh, anyway, uh, so anyhow, uh, I guess Jay, you and I would probably live in the autistic section of my town. <laughs> yeah, probably. Um, what did we want to do today? We wanted to talk about uh, before we do our questions. Our big theme tonight was to have a. Uh, Reveal two things about ourselves. Actually, Jay, one thing before we do this is a bit, and I know I keep interrupting. The other day, Jay sent uh, Brian and I a text message about the mere exposure effect. Do you want to explain this to uh, everyone? Well, that was a topic from a while ago where I was saying I was attracted to Asians because I worked with a bunch. Well, let's explain this end of the situation again. Just explain to people that maybe a new listener – so or like I, 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 I the you keep saying a new listener, um, yeah. So I was saying that I, I wasn't always attracted to Asians, and then I got this job where I worked with a ton of Asians, and I started when, when becoming. Was this, a, tell, tell, give more detail. So how old were you? Twenty five, twenty six. So the first twenty five years of your life, Asian women or Asian men were not that attractive to you. Nothing did nothing for me. Nothing. You weren't like, and now, um, obviously, you have an Asian girlfriend, mm-hmm. um, and you are very much into Asian girls. Yes. When you when you when you dabble on a Pornhub, do you look for Asian girls on there? Depends on what mood I'm in, but I, I have done that. Okay. Um, so tell me, where did you work? With or if you don't have to tell the name or what? what, it, what it, kind was, of... it was like in a uh, an accounting firm. Okay, you worked in an accounting firm, and. Uh, Tell us more, Jay. There, there was uh, a lot, a lot of Asian women there. Was this accounting firm in China? It was in Midtown, Manhattan. Okay, okay. And there were a lot of Asian women. Was there Asian men also? Uh, oddly enough, not nearly as many. But they, they were like, our strategy here is we opened an accounting firm, we got a lot of Asian women, and just money will roll in. Yeah. Okay. And how long did you work there for? Almost six years. Okay. And based on that, you are now attracted to Asian women. Yep. And the mere exposure effect, explain it, Jay. The mere exposure effect is, uh, according to Wikipedia, a psychological phenomenon by which people tend to develop a preference for things merely because they are familiar with them. So it's also called the familiarity principle. See, so I told you this was a thing. Let me ask you. You went to elementary school for what, five or six years? Yeah. 
So you were exposed to a lot of kids. Why aren't you attracted to kids? Probably because that was pre-puberty. Okay, so if you were, but if you were like a grade school teacher, you would be like, you would just start trying to nail the kids because you'd be exposed to a lot of kids. I don't think it makes turns you into a pedophile. Well, it just this turned you into loving Asian women. I'm just saying this principle that if you are around something, you want to be like, you you suddenly are attracted to it. Well, you took it to a dark place real quick. <laughs> that one, I okay, that went really dark. How, how can um, you bring up pedophiles like every <laughs> single episode? Okay, why weren't you attracted to the Asian men? Like there were men in the like right now. What's your office environment? Like it doesn't now? make are, you gay. Well, I'm, <laughs> I'm just saying this exposure. Okay, what kind of what's the makeup of the women at your office now? Um, well, my department specifically is um basically fifty year old women. Why aren't you nailing fifty year old women? Like, why aren't you like go to your girlfriend? Like, I've got to leave you. I. Uh, Betting and accounting is 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 just divine. Mm. Are you attracted now to a fifty year old woman? No. Oh, but you're you're but you've been merely exposed to them. But I haven't been almost solely exposed to them. Can we uh can we now cut to the scene where you explain this to your girlfriend? <laughs> <laughs> Hi Jay, what's going on? I want to talk about uh how we ended up together. I know when I met you, I just thought you were a dashing man who could probably conquer any video game, and I wanted to be with you. Tell me more. Have you always been attracted to? Were you attracted to me right away? A uh, funny story. Oh, what? Well, what's a funny story? You know how we were friends for a few years before we started dating? Yeah, yeah, I remember that now. Yeah, then I got this uh, accounting job. Okay, and you got you said I need to grow up and get a job and find my wife. Let me uh, just give you this uh, pamphlet on the familiarity principle. You could read that and then come back to me if you have any questions. Oh well, this says uh, being around. I don't really understand. You're saying that you were around a lot of Asian people, so you've grown accustomed to Asian people, like your goddamn Pavlovian dog. Pretty much spot on. Yeah. Okay, well, that's a that's a way to build a healthy relationship on you, goddamn freak. <laughs> End scene. Um, so we were gonna do in this show today two reveals. We each reveal Bri or Doc or whoever's gonna come to the show. Also, was gonna reveal something about themselves. We have time for this, Jay? Um, we'll ten minutes, yeah, ten minutes segment. Yeah. Then we'll go to the questions. Yeah. Um, so I have two things to tell you. They're kind of weird. Okay. Um, and I hope I hope you have two things to tell me. They're kind of weird. Also, it's supposed to be weird things. Yeah, like weird. It doesn't have to be like super odd. Like you're into like collecting dead dead birds, but like mm-hmm. it's something, something just something odd about something that's odd that you do that you have not really discussed in the show prior. Yeah, odd reveals. Mm-hmm. You want uh, you want to go first, Jay? I hope like I have two things, and I imagine you're, like I bet your first thing is gonna be so goddamn weird that I'm gonna be like, oh, let's just end the bitch. Jay. I'm not gonna even talk about mine. <laughs> you're like I'm scared to see what number two is. What's what, what's what's your first one? Okay, so. Back in my college days, I was dating this girl who was very um, against, well, not against, she just did not like hair on toes. So she would literally like tweeze the hair on my toes. And yeah. like she'd pull it out? Yeah. To yeah not, she... not to torture you. But wait, she's, she had a big issue with just like hair on your toes, like it just grossed her out. Uh, she, I I wouldn't say like repulsed, but she definitely just didn't like it and did not want the hair there. Did you ever see her like stare at another man's feet? Like, oh man, his feet are like hairless. No. Okay. Um, so yeah, so she would, she would, she would pluck the hair out. Oh, this sounds painful also. This sounds really like, uh, not that I have so much hair. Surprisingly not. Uh, For some reason, the hair on the toes come out real easy. I'm trying to see how much hair I have on my toes now. Now that you say that, like, I have like one or two. Like, it's like you have like a couple. Like, it's, yeah, it's like, not like, a ton. That's what's the other thing. It's you know, it's a couple. How often do they grow back? Uh, like, are you, like, it, like it was like every week you're doing this, or it's more of like a month? How long yeah, did you like date a, a month? A month. How long did you date the girl for? Two years. Okay, so you were like really like. How did she break this to you? 
I, she just said, like, yeah, I don't like hair on toes. So I'm going to pluck them out. Jay, Jay, you know, I'd like your toes to have as much hair as your head has. Um, well, <laughs> you're going to regret saying that. Uh... <laughs> oh, no. It's... Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, that's so... a weird. Yeah. Oh, no, no. It gets so oh, I got used to not having the hair there. So now I still do it. Holy sh! <laughs> How often you every month you're like cutting toenails and cutting hair? Yeah. You pluck the. Oh my god! <laughs> I told you you might not want to do. Yours are so it. much worse than mine. <laughs> mine are just weird things I do. You are just really goddamn. Fu- I don't know if I can do the show with you anymore. <laughs> Fucking weird. There's a. Uh, Cat knows about it, obviously. Your girlfriend knows about it, right? I don't know. I don't think she inspects my toes, so I don't know if she knows that. I mean, there's no. You guys have been together for, what seven years? Yeah, but I no close to it, ten. But um, but like, like at no point she's like, "Fuck, are you doing on the bed? What, Plucking my toe hairs? Leave my toe hairs on the bed? <laughs> what do you What do you do? You like hide in the bathroom? No, I'll oh, be out in an hour. Leave me alone. At my desk. At work. No, no, my dad's uh, here. <laughs> during the during the show when I'm talking, Jay's like, it's Mark's talking. He's on a goddamn. I'm going to do my toes. Doing it right now. Yeah, God damn. I Yours think it's going to be like a. I use skim milk instead of whole milk in my cereal. <laughs> well, it's definitely not going to be. I pluck my toe hairs. <laughs> you said you wanted weird, so. I know I wanted weird. I'm glad that's the whole point of this. It's more interesting when you reveal weird shit. Um. Well, I, 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 my, my, loop, you can't even like continue. I can't. That's fucking weird that you keep doing that. It was weird enough that the girlfriend you did. It, it's it's not just weird that you like the girlfriend did it and like she like she had a thing about it that's weird and you went along with it because like women drive you crazy and you do shit for them. But at some point you were like, "Honey, it's time to do the toes." Like you were like you were encouraging her that we have to do this together. And then you like you just kept going and the girlfriend got the girlfriend was gone, but the toes that lasted a lifetime. <laughs> Every time I pluck my toes, hair, I think of you, Ashley. <laughs> Do you want to go, or are you still reeling <laughs> from this? Cry. <laughs> I feel like I want to do an entire show about this. <laughs> um, so my first one, um, not Neil, be as weird. Um, so I I, it's going to be very disappointing. Now. No, it's going to be this huge disappointing. I, I probably shouldn't even come up with this bit. I. Uh, so I'm a big I'm a big Howard Stern fan. I told I talked about that on the show, right? Yeah. Um, and so, a bunch of years ago, I started uh, downloading the episodes, probably legally, um, online. You know, like you can download stuff online for free. Oh, can you? No, I didn't know that. Well, you can. Let's assume it's all legal. Okay. Okay. I, I assume I'm assuming doing it legally. But anyway, so like you know how like you could find stuff online well you could find the episodes of howard stern online mm-hmm. um and i would because i because i i while back a bunch of years ago i had this long commute um and in the morning i would always listen to howard stern and are you a big fan have you ever listened to the show i'm not i wouldn't say i'm a big fan um okay i used to not like him at all and then he grew on me a little bit and then uh i haven't listened to him in a long time so i don't know how the show is now i liked him before but then like this during this summer i had this long commute um, it was like it was like an almost an hour and a half each way. Um, the, well, in the morning I would listen to him, and I just became like obsessed with him. The, the show from there, I was just became a big fan because it is really funny and blah blah blah. I'm not gonna sell you on the show, but uh, then like later on when like uh, it was around the time like you could download stuff, and I was like, oh, I wonder if you could download this. Um, and again, totally doing it legally, not doing it the illegal way. The illegal way is that's for criminals. I'm doing it. It's another goddamn ant. Like the guy came, and now the ants are here. And I have to call him back. He was at my house. He could have done something about it, but now, now he's at the call back. This is like doing a show with a squirrel. Like it slice. really. But the ants. I. You know what the crazy thing is? I sat here all. I would work from home today. I sat in the same desk all day. Not a single ant. That we start the show. Apparently, the ants like break a Saturday. They just want to. They want to come out for the show. Well, at least somebody likes it. Yeah, those are our listeners. I'm killing our listeners right now. Um. Anyway, so I started getting these episodes, and I started listening. And you know, do you know how long an episode is? It's like three hours, right? Like four hours. Mm-hmm. Sometimes a little bit longer. So it's a long thing. And I'd put it on my MP3 player and I'd listen to it on the way to work, like when I'm working out. Um, but like how, how – like it takes – like a four-hour show, if you're listening four hours, 
Is that going to take you a little while to, like, get through? At least four hours. Well, I guess, like, you think you're going to get through in a day or a week or longer? Um, it would probably take me if a couple days, yeah. So a bunch of years ago, I started downloading episodes, and I have, like, and I, again, legally. Um, there's a legal way to do it, okay? Um, in case anyone is, anyone is questioning that. Uh, anyway, I got all the episodes, and uh, slowly but surely, I kept falling behind a little bit. And, like, so, like, you'd be listening, like, whatever's going on now, I'd be listening to an episode, say, like, like, three months ago. Mm -hmm. But the show is, like, it's not that topical. They have, like, a news segment, but, like, generally, it's not that topical. You listen to, like, an older episode and just enjoy it just as much, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, currently, I still listen to the show. I don't listen to it all the time. I listen to podcasts, other things. But, like, like, like this morning, I went for, like, a run, and I listened to it. I am currently five years and ten months behind current times. Yeah, I mean, so, I, <laughs> and it's and now like I like I hear something that happened in the show. I want to tell people I'm like, oh, you know what? Like, he did this great interview five and a half years ago. You didn't listen to this episode five and a half years ago. I, I listened to it right now, yesterday. I mean, I do the same thing. Like, um, I think next week we're having Rob from the Uncanny X Cast on, yeah. and I am currently listening to. I'm up to his 2011 episodes. Uh, okay. Uh, how many episodes does he have? He has a uh, hundred and eighty-six or something like that. Oh, so you started from like episode one? Yeah, um, I started from episode one, and then they do like current comics and retro ones. So I got yeah. up to like one forty-nine, but then I caught up to the current comic section. So I started over so I could actually know what they were talking about. Yeah. So yeah, now I'm back up to one twenty-two again. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I'm just like, I like now I've cut, and they also have a news segment where basically, like, part of the show, Robin on the show, like, talks about the news, like a half hour, 40 minute segment of the show. So I'm like getting up to date on the news that happened, like, almost six years ago. Yeah, same with me. I'm, I'm listening to him get all excited about uh, the first episode of Game of Thrones, and like, the series <laughs> is over now. Yeah, the episode right now, they're on there. They've been talking about, like, uh, in the political stuff, they're talking about Mitt Romney running for president. And uh, you remember that guy Todd Aiken who uh, said uh, that thing about a like a uh, um, if it's legitimate rape. I don't even remember that. Uh, it was a whole thing where like he said if it's legitimate rape, um, women uh, can shut that down and not have a baby. Hmm. It was like an actual politician like hmm, running for Republican office that said that. Um, it was a whole big thing because they were like even the Republicans were like. Dude, you're you're a fucking moron. <laughs> yeah. um, anyway, so the, like I'm current events on like eventually I'll get to like stuff that I figure the positive of that is that at some point Howard Stern will no longer be on the air and I'll still have like based on how fast I listen to it I'll still have like a decade more to listen. Well, that's what happened to Rob's show. They they haven't done a show in like eleven months, so I'm like catching up now. Yeah, I mean I figure like there's no harm. So I, like I enjoy the show. It's just like I'm like it's just weird. Like sometimes I'll talk to someone who's like, a big fan. They'll be like, oh yeah, his interview he did last week with like. David Letterman was really cool. And I'm like, yeah, his interview he did uh, with uh, Jenny McCarthy seven years ago that I just listened to was really good, too. <laughs> uh, that, that's my, my first weird thing, which is not toe hair plucking. That wasn't uh, weird at all, really. I thought it was kind of weird, but I guess like our... our I... Jay, the weirdest thing happened. I'm behind <laughs> on some episodes of a show. I thought it was a weird thing that it's I like. I'm, I'm, upset. I'm listening to a show that like is six years old, basically, and I keep. Maybe falling. I'm so weird that like your weird thing is like something I just do normally. I mean, I'm I'm I, I'm a big fan of it. And, like, I, yeah, no, you are kind of weird. I remember we started listening to Dollop. You immediately started episode one. And I'm like, it's on 300. Why would you just go back to number one? Though for that show, actually, you should do that because the, the newer episodes suck, and the, the early ones were great. Well, I told you that I wanted to read an Avengers storyline that was issue number 220, and I had to start from issue one and read all the way up to it. You didn't tell me that. Or maybe you told me that, and I just, like, tuned you out. That's fucking insane. Really? <laughs> yeah, I really did. I, I read 219 issues to get up to that storyline. Well, so apparently I played, I played, I'm playing the reveal a weird, the reveal a weird thing about yourself with uh, the King of Weird. <laughs> My next one's not really that weird either, really. It's just like a, it's something that like, it's not even that weird either. Like it's not, it's not, it's, it's along the lines of probably less weird than that one. 
I, <laughs> well, let's hear it because I'm like. <laughs> my next one is just uh, it was something from growing up basically that like everyone else learns how to do, and I never learned how to do as a kid. And I I felt I always felt like very like insecure about the fact that I didn't know how to do this for so many years. So when I was a kid, did your dad teach you how to ride a bike? Uh, yes. So my dad didn't, didn't give a shit about teaching me how to ride a bike. Mm-hmm. So I never knew how to ride a bike as a kid. And like, you know, like your friends want to go like ride their bikes. I'd be like, can't do that. See you later. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was something that for me was like a weird, like thing I was super insecure about for like super, so many years. And I remember in college, I was on this trip. It was a, like this thing called birthright is birthright. Um, Israel, where you like, they send like all these, send the Jews to all these Jews, to, like a free trip to Israel. Have you, have you heard of this? Yeah, isn't it where they just try and indoctrinate you into being like super religious? No, they don't really do that much indoctrination. They they show you the religion, but it's very like I mean maybe there are certain ones that are more religious, but this one I went on was like it was through the my college like Hillel thing, and it was like they they just you a lot of stuff, but it really was not anywhere like indoctrinating at all. Okay. Um, but anyway, so uh, on it they have like a big bike trip trip, but everyone did, and I'm like I'm like I'm like I'm an adult. I can probably how hard can we ride a bike? I get on. And eventually they're like, Mark, do you want to come in the uh, in the truck? I want to come in the truck. I can't ride a bike. <laughs> it was to me, it was like a really like a, like something that everyone knows how to do. And I was like, I felt like horrible the fact that I couldn't do it. I uh, so it's, I, I have kids now, and I'm not going to be the shit ass dad that doesn't teach their kids how to ride a bike. I feel like that's one of those things that like if you if you if, like you, it's a very basic thing. You as a dad, you feel to teach your kids how to ride a bike, right? Yeah. Like, you're a shitty dad if you don't teach your kids how to ride a bike, right? Yeah. Yeah. So they have things in uh, New York City. There's, like, they have learn the ride uh, classes for, um, for, for adults, basically, uh, that don't know how to ride a bike. Then mm-hmm. the other, other weirdos like me, uh, or not so weird people, because you, you obviously take it to another level. Um, but they have, like, they have a thing. So when I, like, after Zach was born, the first son was born, I'm like, my wife knew I didn't know how to ride a bike. I'm like, I want to go to this class and learn how to ride a bike because uh, I can't fucking wait. I can't like wait till I can't be the dad that doesn't know how to ride a bike with my son. Mm-hmm. So uh, now I learned how to ride a bike and now I can ride a bike. And now, now I can run. Now I'm fine. It was just like a, one of those things that I was like, I couldn't do as a kid. Now I can do it. I felt better. I felt the first time I rode a bike, I was like, holy shit. I was like, holy shit, I'm actually riding a bike. This is, that is just crazy weird, man. It's not crazy weird. I'd fuck, fuck you. I'd be like, I didn't know you're gonna tear hair out of your toes and be like, "This is what I'm into, Mark." I feel like I, gotta... I guess it was. I guess yeah. I guess I didn't even think it was. I just wanted some kind of reveal for the show. I didn't. It didn't have to be the weirdest. I didn't think you'd be like the king of weird. Yeah, I can't I even. I'm, I'm scared my, of your next one. I, you know, I'm gonna change my next one. Um, I, no, are you gonna? Are you gonna? I. Yeah. Anyway, no, anyway, I and I, I'm I'm a good. I'm, I'm good. And now I really enjoy riding my bike with my son around the neighborhood. Anyway, um. Okay, ben, I well, didn't. I did not know how to tie a tie until about last year. We did this on the show last week. We did that one already. Yeah, oh. you remember? I was I was giving you shit for you and Bri because you guys didn't know how to tie a tie. Oh yeah, I was trying to change it because my just your, do your re- just so do goddamn normal. Oh my god, I, I'll come with me weird for next time. Okay, like just do your super fucking weird. <laughs> I like, know your other one has to be insanely weird because you you let off with the one that's less weird. <laughs> you like owe me like three weird ones. I probably do. I will come up with weird things for next show. Okay, <laughs> just I'll come up with some weird shit for you. Okay, um, just tell me what what weird ass shit you do. <laughs> uh, okay, so in either in real life or like. If I'm watching porn or something, I don't like one stitch of clothing involved. What What do you mean? I mean, what do you, do you mean on yourself or on the video? Uh, well, on well I guess, I guess, I guess, I guess, I guess, like real life, like, like you were with a girl, yeah, and you're having sex. You cannot have clo- You couldn't like have a shirt on, which is the common like guys that guys that are not as in shape like to do during sex. Right, but like I don't like any clothes like if there's like one stitch of clothing on it like i get like annoyed and i'm like all right you got to take that off okay so you want the girl to be you or the girl or both you have to be completely naked um i mean definitely the girl like usually usually me too because i just do that out of a habit so yeah. like, if i'm if, like if i'm watching porn or something and they have like uh it, you know, like a hat or like a sock on or something. I was like, eh, this isn't, 
I don't like this anymore. Oh, so basically you're like, I'm going to go to the next video, like, if it's not, if they have anything on them. Yeah, yeah. See, I almost kind of like it when they do have stuff on them. I know, I know a lot of people do. I know a lot of people are like, you know, oh, I love high heels or something like that. Not high heels, but I, I kind of almost sometimes like when the girl has, like, it's like when you, like, they're not fully naked. Mm-hmm. Like, I like, like, like when they're wearing a shirt, but it's like kind of see-through. Mm-hmm. But uh, the heel thing, not the heel thing, but like, uh, yeah, no, I would go the other way on this. I kind of like the clothing a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, no, I know. This wasn't as bad as the hair thing, by the way, on your toes. The whole <laughs> thing, that, that is so much worse. <laughs> um, I'll tell you, I didn't know it was weird, but like basically like to going to sex again to finish. I really need the girl on top. I can't. No other position really works for me. Really? Yeah. Is that weird? Is that weird enough for you? Yeah. Yeah. That's I, hope, I hope my wife's not listening. <laughs> Well, I, she knows uh, I don't think I've ever finished with the girl on top. Oh, I only with the girl on top. Hmm. Yeah. No, I mean, I mean, I've had the girl on top, and then it was like, okay, well, now I need to finish, and I need to get off. Oh no, no, it's totally the reverse. Hmm. All right. I mean, I don't, I don't. Yeah. That that, that good enough for the, for the yeah, yeah, bit? Yeah. I'm glad you got a weird one in there. Yeah, yeah. I guess it's kind of weird. I don't know. I mean, I. I in theory, you should be able to. I don't really know. We don't talk about that in health class. No, that's one thing you don't really talk about too much. In class, too much, like, like, like you don't, you don't like at, at work go like, dude, did you see the game last night? How do you finish when you're uh, when you're nailing your girl? <laughs> <laughs> dude, uh, oh, what you didn't see the game? What's 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 what, what's what your reaction when you're walking away from me? <laughs> uh, yeah, this, uh, the girl came into the bedroom uh, with nothing on but a pair of socks, and I couldn't get off. Uh, anyway, how was this? <laughs> <laughs> she was wearing a glove. I beat the crap out of her. The fuck, you wearing a glove around me? <laughs> uh, okay, um, we can move on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Lorenzo writes, "Hey guys, next time that lady drops a deuce in Tim Hortons, I guarantee you she won't be throwing it. I have tracked her down and paid her a nice sum to lace that poop with funfetti and three hundred lit candles in honor of your three hundredth shell. You're welcome. That's pretty good. Thank you, Lorenzo. That's what we call a callback." Yes. Kevin writes, Mark, how does it feel to know that your Jew national treasure, Adam Sandler, was living in your neck of the woods in port while filming another one of his crappy movies for Netflix? In an interview I heard, he enjoyed his stay but was complaining about his flooded basement and his ant infestation in his mansion. I, I read that one already. And I laughed pretty hard when I first read it. <laughs> you know what? Like, look at his email address. Like, uh, pull up – like. You can search his emails. Read his first email to us. Uh, okay. Let's see. Was it the guy? Who, oh, no, that wasn't the first one. It's like from 2015, maybe? You could, you know how to search his email address, right? Uh, no. You, you just, in the, you were on Gmail. Copy. The, the address and just put it in the in the screen in the search thing on on top and just and you'll get all emails from him. Okay. Oh, because you don't really use Gmail, right? Not much. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, it was uh, it was like three years ago. Oh, he he wanted to welcome you to the town. Yeah, I I think he might live in my town. Oh, okay. I know he says that. I don't know if he actually lives in my town. Well, I was tell, it's telling you about uh, ISIS and stuff. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But you want to re read the email. Just want to say, welcome to the port. It's a very nice place, but mostly I stay in Main Street. I usually take the shorties down to Ralph's Ices and then bang them in the parking lot overlooking the water. You and your wife should look into that place if you're freaky and are in the mood to fuck. I'm sure a lot of babies were conceived there. P.S. Update the Pinterest page. You guys have been slacking. Yeah. Um, yeah. So he does kind of see like a, seem like he's uh, in our town, in my yeah. town. So that's uh, thebrinkofsanity at gmail dot com. We are also brink of sanity. Well, you, Jay, if if just if based on our fans of the show that we have already, if I wind up my family winds up murdered and I'm up dead, could you give that email address to the police? Sure. Okay. Cool. Uh, <laughs> we are brink of sanity three on Twitter. Andrew writes, brink is Twitter is going off with questions now. One, are flat earthers actually just really big ultimate frisbee enthusiasts? Oh, that's a pretty good one. That's a that's a new angle. I like it. Yeah. I like that. That was a pretty good one. Is Mark and Bry happy the Mets trade away Matt Harvey? 
he was going to be a free agent this offseason, so the Mets probably weren't going to re-sign him. The guy, the catcher they got for him is not amazing, but he's doing better than what they had. Um, though he's pitched kind of well. He's pitched okay since they got rid of him. I don't know. Just, I'm not – I'm not. I think it was the right move, but it, I'm not so happy about it overall. And does Mark use the leftover black beans cans as his headset as illustrated last week? Yes, yes. That that would be uh, – that's true. Thank you, Andrew. Um, yeah. For those who don't know, I tend to buy like 100 cans of black beans at a time and only eat black beans every day of the week. That probably was as weird as Jay's hair thing. <laughs> but I've already talked about that on the show. Uh, Facebook, right? Yes. Rob writes, is streaming good or bad for us as consumers? For example, Netflix, Hulu, and video streams all have exclusive – exclusives while apple music title and spotify have exclusive albums and artists yet for about ten dollars a month you get entire disco dis, discographies so does it hurt or help so you get a lot of music or a lot of shows for ten dollars a month but you're kind of locked out of things unless you pay like ten dollars here and ten dollars to netflix and ten dollars new hulu and ten dollars the title and ten dollars to spotify yeah there's so. a tv thing is getting way too segmented uh as far as music there's not that many exclusive albums. I think it's it's probably good for the consumer right now, but you got to think Spotify is not profitable. So if they go under, like you have nothing. Well, that, then that, someone that's... else would take over, and some other form would. I mean, I feel like those things cannot last. Like Pandora and Spotify, they cannot. They don't. I don't think they're both losing a lot of money. Right. That's what I'm saying. So people are paying ten dollars a month. Yeah, you can listen to whatever you want right now, but if they fold, you just spend hundreds of dollars and you have nothing. That's why I like buying my music. Yeah, I, I mean that's true, but I mean I guess you just you could buy the music after it goes under. Well, I just do it now and skip the whole drama. Steven also wrote, wrote, "I have no fucking clue how artists benefit from this shit. Ten dollars a month, and I get to listen to an entire disco- discographies. I haven't been able to find an artist or even out al- an album. Spotify doesn't even have ads." Yeah, they make uh, they make a lot less now. That's why bands are touring more often, and that's why they do like the meet and greets, and that's why they try and put extra album only tracks on and stuff. Uh, they're trying I to make up money in other ways. So, if you're a band, let's say you're Soundgarden, um, <clears throat> and you're rate, and I picked an older band, let me, I, whatever. Let's say you're you like you're pick a, a band where the singer's alive. But... <laughs> let's say you're John Mayer. Do you get paid every time your song gets played on the radio? Yes, you do. Okay. Yeah. Um, and the uh, are you are you what you get paid is that like similar what you get paid? So you get paid less though for like Spotify or like uh, Pandora. Yeah, because I think that's you know that's like an individual stream, whereas a radio can hit potentially millions of people at once. So the radio has to pay more per. So they were making money by getting played in the radio, but now they're not making money. They're making a lot less because of that, like how little money they get paid from these services. Correct. Yeah, that's pretty shitty. I mean, I like, mean it's, you know, Taylor Swift is making a lot, but like, you know, smaller bands, you know, the, the, the yeah. Black Keys of the world are probably making much, much, much less. Well, on the on one side, one side of the coin is that like a, a lot of these bands that would never have gotten exposure on the radio now can get all this exposure through these services. Uh, yeah. They, they if, you're, if you're you're if you're on there, in theory, people can find you, um, and you can spread. You could like, if you spread like the message out there, like through social media, say that your band is like here, and people go like, oh, I want to check you out. Like it used to be, I'd have to turn on the radio and just hope it gets played uh, or buy the album. Now I can just pre- put in whatever, like put Black Keys in the uh, in the uh, in Pandora, and I suddenly get to listen to their music. Well, yeah, it's a no. I mean. You could still have like a video go viral on YouTube. I mean, OK Go made a career out of that. Yeah, I'm just saying like it, it, all these different um, the, the venues gives them more ability to – like if you're going to make more of your money anyway through like touring. So now like you have a better chance of getting more exposure to fans than you would just like being relying on the radio. You do, but I, I mean what – when was the last time somebody said, check this song out and sent you a Spotify link as opposed to like a YouTube link? Yeah, no, that's true. That's true. I mean, I guess YouTube's another way, way to do it. You're like right. Nobody, you're right. Nobody's ever sent me a Spotify link and said, listen to this. 
I mean, I don't even use Spotify. I use Pandora. Is Spotify much better? I don't want to. I, actually, I don't pay ten dollars a month. I, the only one I pay, I have Amazon Prime. Um, so I guess I get the music and the video through that. Yeah. Um, and it's also like Amazon Prime has enough music that I don't really care about like paying Spotify to get their version of it. Mm-hmm. But I can see like Hulu has some shows that like Netflix doesn't have, which has some shows that Amazon Amazon Prime has like very little shows. Uh, yeah. Eros, right. Eros writes, uh, yeah, I guess like I feel like all this segmenting probably screws the consumer and the band screws, screws the consumer at the end of the day or it will. Because yeah, eventually you'll have will. to pay for ESPN. You'll have to pay for every, everything you want. Basically, you'll have to pay separately for Yeah. Uh, Eros writes, Stephen, fuck the artist. I like paying ten dollars and I still think it's expensive. Let those fuckers uh, tour and keep getting all the girls. Fuck them and cheat on their boyfriends. All right. OK, okay that was a good uh, counterpoint, Eros. Uh, Jason writes, guys, just had to prepare for a funeral burial, and the minimum for it was $8,800, including the box for the dead and the cheapest one and the tombstone. Stone. Have you guys ever paid for a funeral because it's a hell off of a, of a good business? Um, and Eros responded, who may also be Jason, uh, in New York City, that is cheap as hell. I had two friends die, and the funeral was 25 k and the other near was 35 k as you're basically buying land in New York City. Yeah, that's why I'm doing cremation. Why? You'll be dead. What do you care? Yeah, it's such a waste of money either way. I mean, it is kind of a like I think George Carlin has a bit about like like how it's just like a weird ritual where we like put our dead in the ground. It is. It's weird and it's like overly expensive and it, the whole thing is just kind of dumb. Yeah, I mean, you like get. I assume you've been to a cemetery. Yeah. It's it's also weird. Like you see all these stones. You're like all these dead people are just walking on dead people here. It's like. Yeah. Um, I need to pay for all this upkeep for it, and like. Yeah, then it's the whole thing's a waste. Would you? Should we get into the funeral business? Uh, I feel like it's a hard business to break into. Why? Well, you need like a thousand acres minimum. <laughs> That's true. Uh, well, you could do the uh, just the funeral home, and just like you don't have to buy the plot. You can just do the funeral home, which I guess that probably good to have the uh the acres too with the, with the dead bodies just uh, start buying up walmarts and turning them into graveyards toys r us there's no toys r us are all out of business you can put dead bodies in toys r us's there you go jason writes what would you do mark if your child wanted to join the army um i would not be excited if my child wanted to join the army i wouldn't um, either yeah i mean like it's I mean, part of my issue is that I feel like we as a country like to wage war for things that are not very necessary just because people that weren't in the military feel like we can just send the army wherever we want and shoot whoever we want. Yeah. It seems less. No, well, so let's say it, 9-11 just happens, Jay, and mm-hmm. you're all on board fighting a war with the uh, Taliban, which didn't, didn't attack us. Mm-hmm. Um, what uh, let's, just, what, what's, let's just say forget, like, forgetting like that. Let's say it's World War II. Nazis, we all agree Nazis are bad guys. And your kid says, I want to join the army and go fight the Nazis. How do you feel? Uh, I still don't like it. Yeah. I, I don't really want my kid dying in battle. I mean, like, yeah. like can, can you be like the army chef? Or My uncle was, a, was an army nurse, um, which uh, he's smarter than most people. Yeah, that well, like I had a friend who was even smarter. He was uh, in the army band. Yeah, those things. You're like, oh, you're in the band. Yeah, you know, you you know why you're making fun of me because I'm alive. Right. Um, and he could just tell everybody he's in the army. He doesn't even say <laughs> the band. Yeah. Um, yeah. The uh, I wouldn't be excited about it. Um, Jason writes, the business idea of nude women teaching stuff was pretty good for views, not to make money though. Uh, Mark, I don't I don't want to work until I'm 50 like Jason. What other business ideas have you um, you have? So uh, I don't know really. I guess in fairness, how do we? I don't know. I guess we could monetize our naked women thing by advertising. Though there are already a lot of naked women on online anyway. I don't really know how any of the porn stuff makes money online. I mean, we could also just um, do our Walmart graveyard thing. It's Toys R Us, Jay. Let's get Toys the store Us. right. Toys R Us. Yeah. Uh, toys so dead. We can look just like a uh, dead bodies are us. Yeah, like we already we already got half the title there, so it'd be pretty easy. And the and the George Rest, if you haven't been in one recently, they kind of look like they look like they can keep dead bodies there. 
Jason writes, uh, last question. Have you guys ever eaten a lot of oatmeal and forgot it has fiber and took a dump like you had stomach flu? I love our listeners. <laughs> I have to say, I eat a lot. I don't, my dumps are totally fine, but I eat a lot of fiber every day. I mean, I eat the black beans, which have a ton of fiber. And I started at work now. Um, I hate like, I don't know. I, I, do you buy your lunch every day or every at work? Or what do you bring lunch? What do you do? I probably bring like three or four days a week, but I buy breakfast almost every day. Oh, how much do you pay for breakfast? Um, if I get a breakfast sandwich, it's like four bucks. Where, where, where do you get it? Or like you get it from like the, like the uh, convenience store or do you get it from yeah, my truck? Yeah, like the one like right by my subway station. I, I alternate. Ah. I either get a breakfast sandwich or uh, I, I bring an oatmeal. I like alternate days. Well, what's your breakfast sandwich? Is it like an egg sandwich? Yeah, sausage, egg, and cheese. I'm sure, it's good. Um, yeah, so I got like uh, I can't bring myself to buy lunch every day at work because I feel like it's a waste of money. Yeah, well, uh, my girlfriend cooks, so I usually have three or four days worth for that. No, that's a good idea. I was always bringing my lunch, and I got like just so tired of bringing my lunch, and just the whole making it and then bringing it, everything just like. So now I've started. Uh, I bring a big thing of oatmeal. Um, I bring a chia seed. You remember what chia seed is? Yeah, yeah. So I put oatmeal, chia seed, put some raisins and some peanut butter, add hot water, and I just make oatmeal at work every day now. You should try overnight oats. What are overnight oats? You basically you do that, and then you put it. it you you don't put hot water. You just put like regular temperature water, and then you put it in the fridge, and the oatmeal absorbs the water overnight. Why is that better? Um. I don't know. I've done it before with like some, some raisins and fruit and stuff, and it, it comes out really good. I mean, does it taste better or like? I, I thought it tasted better. Oh, okay. I can't explain no, why, but yeah, I thought it was better. I usually put a bunch of the chia, the chia stuff, also the oatmeal and the chia also have a bunch of fiber in it. So I'm just eating so much fiber now. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, it's pretty good. Like it fills me up, and like I don't know. Like I, I, I once in a while I'll get lunch, but like I. Also, New York City. How much when you got when you buy lunch? How much do you pay for lunch? Yeah, I mean it's hard to get lunch for under ten bucks, which is a lot of money for you to spend every day. Yeah, yeah, doing that every day it adds up quick. Yeah, you know what? A total side note. So the uh, we were out to dinner um, pretty recently with a uh, one of my daughters, like uh, one of her friends, like the parents. We were out to dinner with them, and the dad mentioned like he's a uh, he was he uh, like there was a kind of like. I live I, the, my town's Port Washington. There's like a Port Washington dad's thing, and uh, I like he's like oh like uh, they, we, every quarter like, everyone meets up and like has like a dinner or they have like a golf outing. And I was like oh I meet more dads in the town. Like I'm down for that. Like uh like tell like include me. And the guy's like yeah sure 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 sure. And he like emails the guy who organizing this thing and like includes me. And uh, so they have like this thing coming up next Thursday where it's like dinner. I'm trying to find out like I'm like. Who's putting this thing on? What's what's the story with it? And so this one guy basically like has organized this thing because he thought it was a good idea. And how much do you think the dinner was? I'm glad this guy mentioned how much the dinner was going to be before I went. Um, seventy five dollars. A hundred and fifty dollars. That's stupid. I was just like, I'm like, great. Now I'm just going to awkwardly tell him I have to work late that night. <laughs> Because I can't be like, oh, too rich for my blood and have that be my response. So, like, I clearly said I wanted to go, and he kind of just dropped that part. I'm like, I'm just going to be like, okay, I have to get to work late. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's that's excessive. Damn, I'm like, I'm like, I don't need to meet, I don't need to meet anyone that badly. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think $75 would still be a little bit rich for my blood, um, but I think I would do that. But 150 is uh, not so good. Not, not, so, not, not so my speed. Uh. Liam writes, uh, what is the most money you have gotten for free? Mm, I think either 20 or 40 bucks. When you say like free, what do you mean? Like you found it? No, like um, I went to like a late night pizza place and I gave him $10 and he gave me like $40 change. <laughs> Best pizza place ever. And then I was a dick, and I asked him for uh, for change so I can get quarters to play his arcade game with his with the free money they gave me. 
You find out that this is just his thing. You got like he just has tons of money, just gives everyone awkward change. I found out before they had. Um, you know, this is when I first went to college, and not all the registers had like the, the you know the electronic change thing. Yeah. And so I would just ask them a question while they were trying to count my change, and like, <laughs> a lot of times I would end up getting way more money than I <laughs> should have. That's pretty funny. Um, I like I actually made it a thing to like ask a question while they were counting change. Uh, I actually t- I actually recently had someone give me the wrong change, and I I, I was like they were like and that'll be eight dollars. I was like I think you we got three ice creams. It'd be twelve dollars. And the woman's like, oh, thank you for being honest. And I was like, okay. <laughs> Did you 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 how often do you correct people? They give you wrong change. Do you uh do you correct them? Now I do. Back in college, I was super super poor, so uh, I was. More than happy to get wrong money, but I'll correct people now. Okay. Um, what's the most money I've gotten for free? I don't know. I don't. I don't. I, don't, I can't think of one. Uh, Liam writes, "How you think Trump is doing after his tax plan? Of a lot of people I know are starting to like him. So Brian Mark don't have to say he's an idiot like everyone else. Following the trend, immigration is down to uh, one million. Starting to really like this guy." Um. You know, immigration was down under Obama, also. Yeah, but and I think bring that up. Um, and immigration is down because our economy is like not really as good as everyone's saying. There's yeah. shitty jobs. People don't come for our shitty jobs. That's why immigration is down. Um, Jay, are you now a big fan of Trump? No, if I owned a corporation, I'd be a huge fan of Trump. Yeah, corporations got big tax breaks. You do corporate tax stuff? I assume you. Well, you would be if you got. Is that like stuff on the uh, CPA? Yeah. Is it like do you have to learn the new rules? Uh, some of them, yeah. Oh, so the stuff that he just passed, you have to know some of the new, like what new rules do you have to know? Um, they're just different deductions, and I mean they don't really teach like the actual brackets or like the numerical amounts because it's change every year, so you can't really test on those. Oh, so okay. it's it's more like you know just general concepts. So if I was a corporation, if we were a corporate brink, how would we benefit? Well, how do we scam the system, Jay? Well, I mean, if we were making – if we had a corporation two years ago, we'd be paying like a 35% rate and now we'd be paying 22%. So I think the thing that a lot of companies do is like uh, like Apple will sell the, the rights to like the ty- – like they'll let's say we're a corporation, but we have a subsidiary in Ireland that owns the rights to the name Apple. And we pay that subsidiary a billion dollars a year for those for those rights, so we can like subtract all the profits based on the fact that we have to pay for these rights for Apple title. Yeah, am I am I, am I on the right track? You heard this? Like a lot of companies put their IP in like some low low like low tax area where they like have to pay that like they have to, they have to pay to use the IP that they already own to other their, their subsidiary, and then they subtract that from their taxes. Yeah, well, I mean, also people were making, like, saying all the revenue came from, like, a low-tax company and just keeping all their money overseas. Yeah. Uh, Liam writes, okay, so Libya is dangerous shithole now. They were way better off when Gaddafi was alive. So remind me, Mark, why your people really took him out of power? <laughs> okay, Rob writes, was the, what was the number one song when you guys were born? For me, it was Informer by Snow. Which makes me say that Rob is uh, pretty young. Uh, you're 78? Yeah. Oh, 79. So the number one song, uh, oh, I guess it would be, I'd have to go to the month, right? Oh, uh, you could, whatever, you can do the year. Shadow Dancing by Andy Gibb. Oh, My Sharona by The Knack. I like yours better. I do too. Um, Liam writes, Jason McKenna, McKenna, Jason McKenna, when I buy something online from Amazon or Walmart, I type my credit card number and in less than a millisecond, my transaction is complete with an email confirmation. So, and then this next part's in all capital, Jay. So tell me why the fuck I need cryptocurrency. How, how, how is it the future? I'm starting to think you're making money in crypto is the equivalent of me going to the casino with $500 and leaving with 2 k unless I'm bri, of course, and then I would owe $3,000. Except that if you go to your uh, – if you looked up your credit card online, it would say pending for three days. 
Yeah, but I, I but, but 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 the point being though, like it's still like as far as the transaction, the transaction t- t- has took place. I mean, maybe the credit card company still is not, it's still settling the with your bank, but you still got that thing from Amazon pretty fast. Yeah, one side of the transaction is complete right away. The other side isn't. Yeah, but for you, the consumer, what do you give a shit about the other side? Well, I mean, it's, uh, it's, I don't know. Well, I mean, why wouldn't you? <laughs> oh, I give a shit what, like, uh, like, like Visa, like they're when they get their money. Or when no, Visa but there's, pays, there's when also, Visa pays Amazon. There's also uh, more of a trail with the crypto too. See, if you bought like a, a house from somebody, if you bought something from somebody, you could tell where that money that the um where that item is where the purchase went from like transaction to transaction yeah i bought an iphone from apple the apple the uh, the iphone went from apple to me well, okay let's let's find fine let's say i sold you a used iphone mm-hmm. can you figure out can you figure out where the uh where, where i bought it from if i do it all on crypto well me personally no I <laughs> the, the thing is the thing is also you can have um the prices go down too because you don't have the transaction fees technically would be lower than um you know than when you use your credit card. Okay. So you in other words, you um if they ever have a hearing before the government, a regulatory agency about why crypto is better, you should not be their spokesperson. No, no, I should not. I should not. <laughs> but I mean, with a credit card, you're going to pay in, like interest on it, APR. With a, with crypto, that's it. No, if you pay if you pay it off right away, you don't pay any interest. You have thirty days from a purchase. Like, you don't pay interest if you pay it off within thirty days. Right, but I f- feel like most of the time people don't do that. Anyway, I'm I'm. I'm very tired right now, and you just asked me to explain crypto at the very end of the show. So, <laughs> okay, uh, Eris writes. So Morgan Freeman just got caught with sexual harassment. Guys, how do you think this will affect women? I work in a mid-sized nonprofit organization that we just got approved with a budget that allows us to hire 14 new people. With that, Jay, do you, you want to give your resume over to Eris? No. Uh, with that being said. Could you, would it be great, Jay, if you like end up getting a job and your supervisor was also a brink listener? <laughs> like Eros was your like, or one of these one of these people asking questions when it was like suddenly your boss. <laughs> that would be a Jay. Would you? Uh, okay, so uh, ten thousand dollar raise and Eros is your boss. Mm. Sure. Okay, um, twenty thousand dollars raise. Eros is also your boss. Um, and you have to sleep with a dead squirrel. No. Okay. Um, with that being said, being a supervisor of 12 of those positions will be filled by men and me and the other married managers don't want women as any accusation or misconduct and, um, and cripples the organization reputation thus leading to less grants. If this is happening with us, I imagine other companies and organizations will do the same moving forward. What do you think, and do you have a sexual harassment confessions to make before those women accuse you guys of this wrongdoing also? I have to say, we here at Brink of Sandy have never had a female co-host um, because so we don't want to be accused of sexual har- harassment. We've had tons. Uh, fine. Fuck you, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do, you think that, do you think this will be a legitimate thing where like people are scared to hire women because they're going to be accused of... like? Harassing them? No, but I think it's, people are going to be extra awkward and like ridiculously careful of what they say and do, like to the point where it's going to be like almost problematic. Yeah, I could see. I could see that being like the other way. I mean, but like it's just so weird. How many people have been like, okay, you're you're in it. Like, how many people have, like have been like brought down? I mean, like, not. I'm sure, like, if they're guilty, like, they they should be like pariahs. But like, it's just so many weird. How many people are like, like every week, someone new? Yeah. Eris writes, Mark. Since your daughter will grow up liberal and she will date a black man, black and Hispanic men, 
What will you do when she tells you her boyfriend hit her? Would you call the police, assuming she is over 18, of course? What if she tells you, Daddy, it's okay. I made him hit me. It's all my fault, and I love him. <sighs> Eros writes. Uh, <laughs> Eros writes, considering Mark is not a jock and extremely far from it, talking uh, ocean depth far and has average looks and weak non-athletic genes, it's a huge probability that his son will get bullied in junior high school and high school. How will Mark tell his son to deal with it? We all know how mean teens can be, especially males, which tend to get physical. Um, I don't know. I feel like I told my son to stand up for himself and like fight, fight the kids. I don't know. What would you tell your your kid to do, Jay, that you don't have? <laughs> I mean, what, would you, what would you tell your imaginary kids to do? Probably stand up to him without getting violent. Yeah, what if like what if like the like situation is like I mean like high school junior high like junior high like they want to fight like what do you do like that that he's like he, he wants to fight me and I've tried standing up and like he just wants to fight me should I fight or should I run what do you say I think it depends on the kid I mean a lot of times one punch in the nose ends the entire thing yeah I uh, I'm not looking forward to all this shit but like I mean not not this previous question about my daughter getting beaten but uh all the stuff that comes with like bigger kids when they get older and like doing with junior high and high school stuff sounds fucking awful yeah eris writes considering weed is getting more and more acceptable in our society uh and uh de blasio is ensuring um that what what will um is ensuring that what will mark do when his child starts smoking weed and it's something teens do um to fit in and becoming as normal as playing video games you heard what de blasio did right jay no. He told the police in New York City to stop arresting people for weed. Oh, cool. So it's not legal, but like if you catch it, they catch people smoking weed on the street. I think they can give you a ticket, but they're not supposed to like bring you in and like charge you with anything anymore. Right. I mean, I'm sure over, over a certain amount they do anyway. They do, but like this individual weed. Um, if my kid was smoking weed, I would talk to him about it, but I don't think it's I don't think it's that much more of a big deal than like drinking. So. Yeah. Uh, Rosera writes, I, all the questions are for my kids, by the way, Jai. Rosera writes, why in the morning does men urine sometimes come out in two streams, like divided? All you, Jai. Uh, sounds like you're having wet dreams. Rosera writes, if you had 5K, what stock would you put it in, all in? Jason, don't tell me crypto as it's falling uh, hard, as it's failing hard as we speak. Idiots thinking they will beat the government regulation and it's the future. It's actually not falling hard, but okay. Oh, well, let's see where it is. Uh, it is. It was going. It was going up, but now it's not going up so fast anymore. Last I checked, it is at uh, Ethereum is at five seventy nine. It was like seven hundred last time we did a show. It, but it's been in the high five hundreds for like most of the week. It's not falling anymore. Okay, Jay, pick a stock for our listeners. Uh, mutual fund. No, pick a stock. I don't know. I if, I, if Facebook, I knew, I would have more stocks. Face Netflix, maybe. Sure. Netflix, buy, maybe. buy high. Okay. <laughs> I don't fucking know. Uh, Rosera writes, uh, what are some of the best scams? We're almost done here. What are the best scams you guys know of? Me, I've been getting Spotify and Netflix and HBO for free for the last 12 months as I keep rem uh, remaking t new emails. Two, I order from Papa John's and Domino's a lot. Every other order, I call customer service that my order was not cooked well, hence my refund my money. Every other order, I do this, of course, so I don't catch on. Can't get Jew, uh, Jewy, a.k.a. greedy. Thank you, Rosario, for that last part. <laughs> um, how do you do spot like Netflix without a credit card? Don't you have to do a credit card every time you do it? I thought so. Yeah, I thought I thought that was the credit card was the indicator. I mean, these could also be fake stories. Oh, really? You think people aren't completely honest with us? <laughs> I once, uh, when I was like uh, in high school, I went to a gym, and the gym didn't make you like sign in or anything when you went there, mm -hmm. and so I paid for one month and went for twelve. <laughs> that was my, that was my best scam. That works. What about you, Jay? Uh, uh, I mean, I think we told the story a million times out. 
Brian and I got free pizzas for like five straight months. All right. Jason, Jason writes, guys, what is the best bank to open a new bank account? Don't tell me Bank of America as I heard those fuckers scam you with overdraft fees. I don't yeah, know. What... Uh, bank of America is the worst. Bank of America is pretty bad. But apparently uh, the other one's the worst. Is, uh, uh, not, um, what's the one that just got in trouble for screwing everyone? Wells, Wells Fargo. Fargo. Wells Fargo, yeah. Well, even their new commercials are like, hey, we were assholes. Not anymore. <laughs> yeah, Citibank or Chase, I guess. I, I use Citibank, but uh, I don't fucking know. They're all probably evil. What do you use? Chase and Citibank. Uh, what are your account numbers? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Bry writes, I, I mean, Jason writes, Bry, how do, you, how do I gamble on sports now that it is legal uh, in New York City? I'm sh- I'm sure me and Mark would love to do it now that it's legal and I don't have to worry about Tony Soprano will come to get me or go to a cocaine bodega in Bronx to do it. And Rosario Reich says, yeah, like NBA would be easy. Uh, put $400 on the Warriors. I don't think it's legal in New York City yet. No, I think all, all the Supreme Court did was said the states have to have the right to make it legal in their state. It's yeah, a state, sure. right? Not a federal. So New Jersey, I th- is supposedly passing this. Yeah. But uh, New York City hasn't done. New York hasn't done anything yet. Right. Um, last question, Jay. This comment is for Stephen. Stephen, if you decide to go out guns blazing, please wear a Brink of Sanity shirt while doing it, and don't record in portrait mode. <laughs> All right. Thank you, everybody, for the questions. Patreon.com slash The Brink of Sanity. Help us get up to $6 a month. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the Brink of Sanity at gmail.com. Stephen created a Brink of Sanity group because we have a Brink of Sanity page. So um, check it out. It's yeah. um, there's, there's stuff going stuff, on there. There's stuff going on there. Yes. And, uh, yeah. I guess uh, we will be back soon. Right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, We're going to do one. I thought you said, uh, what's his name going to be on next week? Rob from the Uncanny X cast. Yeah. What, what day is he doing it? The 10th. All right. So stay tuned. Next for next Sunday. The Sunday. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. Are we, are we going to do one before then? Probably not. We're not going to do like a, what, so Rob's going to be on for the episode 300? Yeah. Okay. All right. So um, thanks for listening. We'll be back on the 10th. Oh, Bye. read the power. Jay, read the power of now so we can talk about it next show. Okay. Okay. Bye. Bye. Bye, love. Goodbye, everybody. This is the end.